Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Interconnect 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the event and extract the signal and noise. Silicon Angles, proud to be here for a special event with IBM Interconnect in the Go Social Lounge where all the action's happening. Go to interconnectgo.com for the new social experience site powered by CrowdChat, CrowdChat platform, the VIP influencers, a great way to experience the show if you're not here live. Our next guest is Nancy Pearson, CMO of IBM Cloud. Welcome back to theCUBE, great to see you. Great to see you guys. Love chatting with you, you're dynamic, you're so awesome, great to have you back, and the Thanks. cloud is super hot right now. It is so <laughs> hot right now. <laughs> this is dominating the show pretty much. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, but this is a cloud show. It's all about it under is. the hood and application speed, standing up stuff. What's your take, how do you feel? Are you happy with, with things here, customer reaction? Uh, I feel terrific about this event, I really do. And as you know, this is the first one of this size. So we compressed three of IBM's previous conferences into one major conference and we made it the cloud and mobile conference. So yes, it's all about cloud, we got some mobile in there as well. But we're really actually covering the entire portfolio here. So it's been uh, exciting and we actually got 45% of the attendees are new to any IBM conference. So that's kind of a really important number and we've seen some really positive feedback from our clients and from our business partners. They're saying that's the most exciting part about this event to them because they're having some new conversations. So um, that was one of our objectives. The other was to combine the content, really focus on cloud, make some major announcements around our hybrid cloud capabilities and our strategy. Um, and then also profile clients. You know, this is about client success. A lot of client success and key partnerships. So the data doesn't lie, well, you know we're data driven. Um, and so I'm looking at the IBM community of Interconnect, yeah. the three shows. Since you guys announced the three shows, been running full, full monitoring on, the, on our listening engine. And I, over the past three months data, the top interest points are cloud, big data, and IoT. And the other ones are IBM, IBM, obviously IBM centric. But the three top are cloud, big data, and IOT. Do you agree, is that, the, is that the right sentiment? I mean, IOT seems to be coming up in every conversation, in applications, mobile, yes. obviously cloud. It really is, and you know, when we talk about cloud, it's really impossible to talk about cloud without talking about big data analytics, or IOT, or mobile, and even social. And in fact, um, we took a very different approach to this event from a general session perspective. We focused on client vignettes, and so we have highly produced client vignettes for every general session. So it's not an IBM or up there talking with a bunch of PowerPoint charts about technology. It's, a, we bring to life a customer scenario, and in many of these scenarios, they cover IOT plus mobile plus cloud in very meaningful ways, you know, in an integrated approach. And I think that's another interesting thing about the way we're doing this particular event differently is, we've had clients kind of railroaded into, oh, you're going to go to Pulse because you're interested in systems management and asset management. You're going to go to Interconnect because you're interested in WebSphere and business process management. So bringing all of this content together, cloud has really permeated all of these areas and then we get more clients because they're, they understand it more from their perspective versus are going at it from an organization out perspective. Plus it's more integrated. So it's you're hearing the stories that are you know, full end to end. Right. So talk about your keynote a little bit. Yeah, so, well yesterday was general session kickoff and Robert LeBlanc did yep. that with Airbus and City. I, I'm sure you probably City went through. City was unbelievable. City was, was awesome, so cool. it was really great. Jerry <laughs> did a great job and, and so did the uh, City ex executive. Um, so today, this morning, I did the keynote on business cloud business applications, and um, we also- You made uh, it to your keynote. <laughs> I, I did make it to my keynote. It was questionable. <laughs> and we had a couple of fits and starts. There were little technical difficulties, but I just got up on stage and, and 
delivered anyway. So and the key message was there? Our key message there was we featured a lot about um, business applications and we featured the IBM Cloud Marketplace. You know that's something that we announced last year. Yep. And now we have over 400 services in the Cloud Marketplace between IBM and third parties. And um, so we took um, a fun approach. You know, I gave an overview yep. of what's happening in terms of digital transformation, reinventing your business processes, is how you need to do that with new services, you know, your own capabilities as well as third party services, and a, a strong development platform. But we did it with a vignette. So we had this story about the Stratus Cafe, and we had Chef Jay Bear, who was the, the guy who was the commentator on the first day, come up, big chef's hat, a whole outfit, and he basically, you know, he took, he took him through a startup cafe, and what would happen in terms of you needing to, you know, merchandise your cafe, hire talent, do one-to-one -one marketing all through the cloud marketplace and leveraging and demoing those services. People loved it. They thought it was really yeah, great. Yeah, we had a so pop-up restaurant. Yeah, right? it was a pop-up restaurant <laughs> idea, exactly. Cool. That's exactly what we did. a little Shark did. Tank action, you know, have entrepreneurs come in with their proposals, <laughs> you know. You know, that was one of my ideas for the conference. <laughs> I was hell-bent on getting Shark Tank here. Yeah. And I think it's going to be really fun because we took some of the key entrepreneurs, yeah. the finalists, and uh, it's one of my favorite live on shows. the cube. We'll oh, do I a love shark that show. Shark Cube. Shark Cube, yeah. <laughs> shark Tank Cube. That's uh, right, you could do some rebranding here. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, uh, Dave's a shark. I'm uh, more of a sheep, but... Um, <laughs> Thanks. The, um, going back to the, um, the the key theme of cloud. So, I mean, are you, I'm going to ask the same question. Are you having a pinch me moment like Steve asked the same question? It was like, you guys announced it a year ago. I mean, this is not oh. even a year. I know. So we were kind of like, it's in beta, we don't know how it's going to go. Right, remember that too? You know, you know we were talking about 2,500 and that was a stretch number at the time. I'm sure Steve updated you on the number, it's 250,000. Yeah, it's massive. Um, so, and now, you know, what we're also saying, a very important part of the Bluemix momentum and market penetration is some of these key relationships, like Bluemix and, you know, Capgemini, CSC, some of the new announcements that we made here, Tech Mahandra. So large system integrators that are really integrating and standardizing on, on Bluemix. That's the kind of momentum a year later that's pretty significant because those are large enterprises. And certainly we have a lot of individual developers on the platform as well. Well I think the big shift that we've noticed, Nancy, is that previously, a couple years ago, it was sort of everybody wants hybrid, uh, there's a lot of concerns about the public cloud, people are nervous, blah, 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 but we don't have a solution. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, you really, it's, which, by the way, we were saying it before it was true, but now you've right. got a solution. Yeah. Right? And so what's the customer reaction been to that? The customer reaction has been very positive. Um, you know, whether it's our hybrid cloud announcements around visibility and control and security, um, or we made a number of de developer productivity announcements. Um, I'm sure Steve talked to you about Bluemix Local, mm -hmm. but in addition, the secure gateway capabilities right. and API Harmony. If you think about this, we're making it easier for developers to develop that innovative app and do it in a way that's secure and able to leverage you know, the, the requirements around flexibility in terms of moving your data to the application, moving the application to the data, getting decision making closer to the client through these applications. So the, the, the feedback has been very positive. I, mean, I had dinner with uh, Gartner last night um, and you know, we've got a number of things that um, are exciting and, and really help accelerate our client success with cloud. So it's not about just bringing out ancillary whiz-bang technology. It's about understanding where our clients are, listening to them, and making it easier for them. There's not a question about, am I going to yeah. go to cloud, whether I need cloud technology. It's where are you in your journey and how can we help you accelerate it? Actually, talk about journey. You had a lot of great feedback on Twitter on your keynote, startup, the journey of the startup, but one yeah. comment here I wanted to get your take on, oh, besides best shoes of Interconnect goes to Nancy Pearson. Oh, you great. Got, you got a tweet there. <laughs> um, when you're on stage, uh, you're looking at it. Wait a minute, are my, are my shoes trending? Uh, that's all I'm going to The data, I'm just, that's what the crowd's saying. Um, um, the journey of the startup, the, the stage, you know, discussing the transformation of startup, that was good positive. Uh, the, the comment of disruptor, or, or be disrupted. disrupted. Yes. What do you mean by that? What is that concept? Um, you're either on the side it's of being the winner or loser, right? I mean. Well, it's a decision that we're saying the audience really needs to make that decision. So, if you look at the nexus of forces and you know the advent of cloud, mobile, social, you know, big data and analytics, 
you have other businesses, like the non-traditional businesses, like Fitbit and Uber, coming into the market, they're leapfrogging technology, the technology legacy challenges of large enterprise, but they're also innovating on these applications that can disrupt your business. And it's not technology disruptor either, it's a business model yeah. disruptor. It's a business model disruptor, because they're breaking Enabled plastic through. Enabled by technology. Through. Enabled right. by technology. Well then they got to go back and get the tech, because once they break through, they got critical mass. Right. This but is the can, new business model, the new way to work. That's the new way new, to work, exactly. New way to start up. Yeah. So I told him a story this morning of, um, I was with a large aeros aeronautics or aerospace uh, customer that we all had been flying on their, their airplanes. And their client rep asked me to come in and talk to them about cloud. And so, you know, I was telling them about how cloud's about innovation and they're like, well, we're trying to figure out what applications we should move. And, and I said, it's not, you can't just think of it that way. That's a very infrastructure data center oriented way of looking at it. You need to look at it as to how can you leverage cloud technology to basically in, increase new revenue yeah. streams around your core competency. And they said, I said, aren't you worried about com competition? Because you know, the airline industry is very competitive. And they said, well, not really. We have this great app and we're using this great app. And I said, well, you know, are you thinking about how to create um, kind of augmented solutions or services around the core competency of airline travel? And I said, an example would be if you were if you looked at something like Uber, in New York City, Uber not only you know, has provided transportation in a no totally different way and in an, an expedient way, but they also did some testing around porting nurses to people's houses to do flu shots during that spike in that mm -hmm. time of the year. That's not within their core competency. Well, it is, because their core competency is transportation, but they're including other capabilities and experimenting on de other delivery methods leveraging their infrastructure. So I said to the airline, you could be creating services around a car service so when people get off the plane, it's your car service. You can be coordinating multiple services that are, that are adjacencies to airline travel and then people will flock to you because there's one place to get through one application. I can get my car, I can get my airline tickets, but it's your service, not some Travelocity who's doing it and disrupting you. Well, this is the interesting thing is you can, you're now seeing organizations traverse um, horizontally across That's different right. industries. These adjacencies That's that you talk about, point. enabled by technology, cloud's sort of the substrate. Data is one of those transport mechanisms, right? Social information right. is one of them. I mean, you're seeing companies, you know, Apple gets into financial services, <laughs> You know, We're Bitcoin, Amazon's that. getting into entertainment. I mean, yeah. it's insane. Well, the barriers to entry in terms of expanding horizontally are much lower with cloud and, and d big data and analytics and, and social because you're transforming your business process. So it's interesting because everybody looks for disruption in technology waves and says, oh yeah, this next wave is going to kill all the old guys. That's not happening. Right. What happens is the old guys actually have a ton of cash they got creamed before, and those guys who didn't go out of business realized that the people at the helm realized, well, we can do this too. Right, you know? right, We're so either innovate. be disrupted by somebody yeah. new coming in and taking your core competency and doing it better, that's number one, or you innovate internally and disrupt, so disrupt it's interesting. your industry. So what can clients learn from IBM? Because you guys are one of the largest, oldest companies in the world, you are both now, you've got a $25 billion business, which is this disruptor business, Right. You've got what, almost a $75 billion business that is, you know, try, people are trying to disrupt. So you're in the middle of that. Right. And you're navigating it. You know? We are, and we're, you know, we're very upfront, and back to my keynote, I was very upfront with the audience saying, we're going through this digital transformation right. as well. We're changing our business model. We're introduced to the cloud marketplace. And yes, it's only a year old, and there's, you know, we know we need to do more with that, but it's opening up a that's channel. That's a consumption strategy. It's People want to consume that way. Why wouldn't you go into that's business right. that way? That's right, they want to yeah. self-discover. 70% mm -hmm. of clients make decisions before they ever even contact you in your business. And where are they making those decisions? They're making them online. They're doing the comparisons themselves. You might as well serve them a fertile environment, like a laboratory or a library You guys are going for it. I got to say, IBM, you guys are going for it, the way you do your social, business outreach, I mean, you've always been great for the cube, openness, yeah. now with cloud, you got soft layer in there, you got some meat on the bone, Blue Mix is taking off, there's a rising tide. Right, and, and we all expanded the top software. Engineer, we expanded know, software around the world. And all the engineers are working on it. So I want you to talk about two things. Internal action in terms of building value fast into the platform, 
from all the resources around IBM, what's going on there, and how do you market against Amazon? Yeah. They are winning, they're the gold standard in, in public cloud, they're viewed as winning the integrated stack, but now Blue Mix, Red S, you got Node, right. I saw an Adam Gunther, it's like, Adam's like, he's like, man, you guys are kicking some ass. <laughs> right. Not yeah. fast enough, but go faster. So I'm sure they're all like, hey, we want to go faster. So yes. how do you market against Amazon, given now you got the soft layer, now you got the Blue Mix, you got OpenStack, Right. And so what's the, going on internally for the resources? Well, from a resource perspective, you know we created the cloud unit. So we pulled a lot of those development resources together, now very much all focused in the same direction. So we're going to be able to go much faster this year. We're, you know, we've taken the power of IBM and put it right in the sweet spot of where Jenny wants us to focus, which is on cloud. And again, cloud brings in So that's basically like stop, everyone analytics. says time out, and then time, game, time out. Resources, bang. That's right. That's Need all cloud. Need to move cloud. faster. It's all cloud. Yeah, nice. And again, that the, all the, the marketing teams all came together, the development That's teams nice. all came together. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there's no excuse, right? We've got to continue to go yeah. more quickly. Now your point about like how do we market against Amazon, the reality is Amazon is an infrastructure as a service. It's a public cloud, but it's only the infrastructure component. So when you talk about what we have, well, and, and you yeah. see, we see some blurring between infrastructure and platform. But so we've got SoftLayer, we've got Bluemix, yeah. and we've got a SaaS portfolio that's pretty robust and we're going to continue to invest there. Some clients don't want to take a piece over here, a yeah. piece over there, and a piece over there. Because by the way, they're in large enterprise, they're already pretty fragmented as it is. And their biggest fear is visibility and control over hybrid cloud environments. So they're either hugging their infrastructure behind the firewall, right, and very nervous about the public cloud, or they've chosen the public cloud and they realize they're expanding and they've got to tie back into legacy data or deal with I think that data makes a lot sovereignty of sense. problems. Yes, that makes a lot of so sense. So our announcements yeah. were really focused on we're able to bring visibility control to hybrid cloud environments, right? Yeah. And we have capabilities at each of those layers. Yeah, yeah. We're integrating those capabilities across the layers more. And so when you think about it, if you're a, biz a growing business, yeah. You're going to be able to come to one place and get an open architecture. And we're offering third party services open as well. Open architecture. Open architecture, open cloud. You guys are committed 100% to open architecture. That's right. So you've got infrastructure as a service plus, that's kind of Amazon. You've got SaaS minus, which is kind of like Salesforce. Right, the, the, to me, you described it, the best solution is a, a layer stack of infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service that that's that open integrated. and integrated. That are integrated, exactly. Okay, so the, the IAS piece coming together nicely, the PaaS piece very clearly coming together nicely. What about the SaaS? Can you talk about that a little bit? You, you've purchased yes. so many SaaS companies. That's I a did. hard thing to bring together. Well, that's what my keynote was about. It was really on the SaaS applications, mm -hmm. um, the market, marketing applications specifically, workforce and talent application, um, and then a strategy application. And by the way, most of those SaaS services are leveraging Watson. Okay. I mean, where else can that be? Nobody else has that technology. So it was amazing to show the audience how embedding Watson technology in whether you're sourcing for the best talent in the city that you're looking to start your pop-up shop in, or you have a growing business and you're trying to deploy marketing by leveraging analytics that you know are pulled th in through not only Watson, but also some of the other capabilities that we have, statistical capabilities that we have. So that's a big differentiator. Now, do we have that across everything? No, but we have that across some very, you know, focused areas that are growing quite rapidly. Yeah, well, not a lot of companies have that. I mean, like, they don't have a that. Handful, right? They don't we have, have a huge install base, it's customer two. base. Your install <laughs> base is their front data centers. Yes. So you right. can't just say, oh, we're going to compete with Amazon head on, but they're coming into the enterprise, so you got to kind of put the heat shield up a little bit, say, whoa, 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 we got the we got to address this, this concern of economics, yeah. a new way to do business. Well, they made yes. a lot of noise two years ago. Who did? Yeah. Amazon, right. saying, and hey, and we're coming to the enterprise. And, uh, and I think I, they were somewhat, I think they were very naive well, about it. Well, it's not easy, right? It's, you know, <laughs> it's we, we the know enterprise. That it's not easy. <laughs> Trusty, <laughs> and it's I've good. seen startups go out of business thinking the enterprise is easy, <laughs> so Amazon, again, then big startup. Um, yeah. Internet of Things, why is mm. that so hot? Big data, I can see in cloud and big data work well together because analytics feeds the apps, clouds the engine. Internet of things, is that kind of just another word for mobile? Or edge no. of the network, I mean. Yeah, I, don't, I don't really see it that way. You know, mobile is about, you know, the mobile experience through a mobile app. Internet of things is about integrating sensors and data, structured, unstructured data, um, through all kinds of devices. 
right? It could be your, your refrigerator, it could be from a car. Right, it could be from, from a boat. GPS, from a boat. We had you know. Bosch on yesterday, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, Bosch. right. You'll see the dishwasher. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Nigel was the on the silver hook, right? Silver. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah those, that's those such an exciting really story. That's a great example, by the way, right? Yeah, you know, in terms of not being able to be able to demonstrate a whole sport and get people engaged, a lot right. of what we're talking about is about engagement. So their business, they wanted to engage and they wanted to share data and information across the human that was driving the boat as well as the yeah. you know the support team you know behind the scenes and the fans. We interviewed him in the cube earlier by the way. Did you? That's oh, a great story. Great guys too, dynamic, great interview. Yeah. And he's like thanks for Bluemix. No, literally Bluemix, Watson, Cloud, they couldn't real do it time. Before. They fundamentally couldn't do what they're doing now yes, before sir. without Bluemix. But that's about instrumentation it is. on the boat it leveraging is. it in real time to the cloud back with Bluemix. That's right. That and presenting it in a way that can engage a massive audience that's, you know, could be two, three miles away. What's the big confusion on the internet of things? People, is it, some, you know, GE calls it industrial internet, that's got their flavor. Cisco calls it internet of everything, or yeah. what a, you I know. think you're seeing just some of the same, the terminology's not the same, because I have seen the internet of things grow over the last year tremendously. And just in terms of people even talking about it. So I just think it's, you're at the earlier stages of it. It's the same way people talked about cloud. It's the same way people talked about mobile, and now they're much more comfortable and understanding. Data, same, yeah. way, right? same thing. But so it's, I think it's more of a maturity thing in terms mm -hmm. of people really understanding it and next getting wave. it. Exactly, but it's yeah. here. Yeah. It's not coming someday soon. I mean, and it's a developer okay. hook, too. I mean, developers it's, it's are very much over. a developer hook. You know, how do you create those applications, <laughs> right? <laughs> Okay, so what's next? What's the big focus this year for you guys? We asked this last year, and you just said, we're going to do the best we can. We're going to get out there and grace you with the developers and um, learn and develop the community. What's your marketing philosophy this year? But well, you got a lot going on, right? You got SoftLayer, you got Blue Mix, you got the tsunami of growth with, with uh, data and cloud. Right. What's yes. your plans? So um, clearly we're going to continue to build out SoftLayer and Blue Mix and our hybrid cloud capabilities for visibility and control integrating across those elements. Again, that's not a job that's done, right? The more we can integrate, the more beneficial and value we'll be providing to our clients. And then in addition to that, some of these key partnerships. You saw us partner with SAP, you saw us partner with AT&T, with Microsoft. You know, we'll, have, we'll continue to have some key partnerships because they're bringing us into their industry or into their business on top of our cloud. So we'll continue to do that. Uh, and then there'll be some surprises. You know, we're, we're, we'll get into some, some things that really change the game. That's and what's what the big goal. thing that's going to come from this IBM focus of the cloud division and all Speed. these resources? Speed and agility and innovation. Awesome. Nancy Pearson here inside theCUBE. We're looking forward to it. Obviously, you know, when IBM starts putting their engine together, um, they got a lot of resources, so looking forward to, to watching it, being part of it, covering it. This is theCUBE bringing you all the signal here at IBM Interconnect. I'm John Furrier, Dave Long. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.